Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's session about HCL Nomad Web. My name is Thomas Hampel. I'm the director at HCL Product Management. I'm responsible for the Dominus server for the Nomad product portfolio that we're going to talk about and all things security related. I hope to spend the next uh, 45 minutes or so together with you to talk about what's new in Nomad. Um, there are some important things to prepare. Um, it's three o'clock, so the most important thing is you have to have a cup of coffee to enjoy the session. And of course, uh, make sure you feel comfortable and uh, uh, listen to the show. Uh, other than that, I of course have to include our legal disclaimer here because we are talking about the future version, future product. Uh, so things can change, please keep this in mind. I'm sure you are all following the uh, presentations throughout the week. So you have seen um, Andrew Manby uh, talking about the HCL digital uh, solutions product strategy in which we said that uh, we are providing the apps that run your business. And I'm sure many of you already run Domino as an application server out there. Uh, so many of your very important business applications run on the platform of choice. <clears throat> now, while this is the case since many, many years, um, this year, the year 2020, created a number of challenges for, especially for people that work in traditional offices. Um, and we had a session, when was it, on yesterday, talking about um, the new situation that employees all of a sudden have to work from home. They have to work in different uh, places. And that means um, that all of a sudden, uh, when you're not allowed to go to the office, when you have to work remotely, you have to uh, get uh, work done from your smartphone. You have to get work done from your laptop maybe even from your own computer where you don't have the same uh, tools installed. So um, we presented yesterday a session about how to connect, securely connect to your infrastructure using HCL SafeLinks. And today's session is more about how to actually leverage the applications on your mobile devices and uh, in particular Nomad Web and how to run your applications in the browser. So as a starting point, um, just if you are not aware of this, HCL Nomad is a product name that already is um, an application for the mobile devices. So it means if you have a smartphone, an iOS smartphone or Android or Chrome OS device, uh, you can install HCL Nomad, uh, which then will allow you to run your existing Notes Domino applications on your smartphone without having to redevelop them without having to modify the source code of it. So um, if you are not already using HCL Nomad on your smartphone, please scan this QR code um, on the left side for the iOS platform and on the right hand for Android and Chrome OS. And to make sure that you go to the various, uh, to the respective app store and uh, install the application. It is free of charge, so um, go ahead, try it out yourself and see if um, your applications just run fine. Now, while this will make you happy on your smartphone and tablet devices, the session today is about HCL Nomad Web, um, which is a new enhancement, a new um, capability in the HCL Nomad product portfolio um, that will take the uh, your traditional notes applications to new adventures, meaning uh, the idea is to run the Domino applications completely unmodified in a browser. So uh, I'll have to give you a little bit of a background on the technology that we are using for this so that you can understand why this change is so important and why it is so groundbreaking. So let me start by um, explaining the current, the traditional application development approach. So um, the Notes client that you all are probably using, the Notes client or HCL client for application access is developed in C, C++. So there is some source code that our developers are writing. And in the traditional world, you, we take the source code, we run it through a compiler, 
and uh, the compiler will then create the program that you run. Of course, we have to package it. We have to create an installer uh, to make it easier for you to install the product. But at the end of the day, this is the development pipeline, source code, compiler, and then you have the application. Now, this has been the case for the last 20, 30 years. And um, not only have we seen an evolution in you know, the human mankind from <laughs> thousands of years ago to today, we also have seen evolution in the IT industry. And um, yeah, I, I brought this slide here uh, showing you the evolution in the browser industry. If you are old enough, you may remember Netscape Navigator was one of the first browsers here on the left side. Um, 1994 is when Netscape Navigator was introduced. And this chart outlines the various technologies that have emerged over time. Yeah, on, in the beginning, there was like HTML, then JavaScript came around, Java, and then someone here in uh, 1997, I think it was, introduced Comedia Flash. And well, without going into details, what you can see in this chart is that um, here, especially at around 2009, here on the right-hand side, uh, there is a lot of more lines, a lot of new technologies that were introduced. So uh, there was a Cambrian explosion of new technologies in uh, the browser world. And there are two technologies that are especially interesting because uh, they are so fundamentally different um, that I need to explain them in details. And this is the foundation for HCL Nomad um, in a browser. So the two technologies that I would like to talk about is WebAssembly. Um, and so WebAssembly, for, for those of you who have never heard of this, what is WebAssembly? Um, it is a, a low-level uh, language, a low-level portable binary format um, that will allow you to run applications inside of your browser window. And this can be done up to 20 times faster than compared to traditional JavaScript. It is compiled code, uh, so it's like, uh, yeah, it's, it's much like what Java has promised, but never delivered, meaning uh, Java also wanted to be the universal language that runs on every browser, runs on every platform. But you all know that this is not, that wasn't that easy. WebAssembly is different because it's assembler in the browser. Uh, it's rather new. So it was introduced in April, 2015 and um, leverages the uh, capabilities to really run your code across all browsers. Um, it has shipped 2015 and it recently was uh, declared as a standard by the World Wide Web Consortium, by the W3C Consortium uh, last year in December. So alongside with HTML, CSS and JavaScript, WebAssembly is one of the defaults, one of the um, core foundations that the internet the web browser technologies are based on. So this is important because uh, I'll explain this in a minute, mm, but there is one more I'll need to uh, say a few words about, and this is WebGL. WebGL technically is just a JavaScript library that allows to render two-dimensional and three-dimensional graphics in the window, in the browser window. Um, without having to use any kind of plugin. And uh, for those of you who have been playing computer games in the past, you may remember OpenGL as a graphic card driver standard. So it was like uh, a technology that allows graphic cards to better um, you know, build two-dimensional and three-dimensional graphics. And this is kind of the same technology, but now exposed to the to the web. So WebGL being the graphics library for the web browser. Um, yeah, so why is these why are these two technologies important? Well, simple as that. Um, it means from a technology point of view, 
we can take our existing um, source code here, the same source code on the left, but this time we are taking a different compiler. Uh, instead of taking a standard compiler, we're taking EM scripting, which is the compiler that will create a so-called uh, web assembly module, a WASM module. And with a little bit of JavaScript, we will then get an HTML application deployed that runs just in any browser. In very, very simple terms, you can say, you just take a browser and then you run the application inside of this browser window. Okay, I understand this is complicated what I just explained. So let me show you why this is so important from a technology point of view. I have, um, yeah, taken a look at what other people have done um, using this technology. And of course, on the internet, you are able to find all sorts of crazy people, but uh, th there were some real crazy people who used WebAssembly as a technology and they recompiled an existing computer game to WebAssembly. So what I'm showing here is, uh, running a well-known computer game uh, just in the browser without having to install anything, without having to install any drivers, um, just navigating your browser to a website. And voila, all of a sudden, um, you can uh, run a very complex computer game with 3D uh, graphics, sound, and what have you. Um, I, I hope the video here uh, is playing for you. And you can see it's just a technology demo. So I am not a computer gamer at all. So I have no idea what I'm doing here. Uh, but you see the existing source code just cross compiled to WebAssembly is creating a new experience in the browser. And that technology is really, really interesting for us to leverage. Now, of course, uh, we are in the business world and uh, we're not supposed to play computer games. Um, so just showing you that um, WebAssembly can also be used to build real applications, serious business applications. Let's take a look at another example. For instance, here, this is the company Autodesk. I think you heard from this company because they're well known for their CAT construction product called AutoCAT. And uh, they have done a product called Formit that just runs in the web browser. So it allows building and construction engineers to do um, complex uh, you know, constructions just in the browser. You, you don't have to install anything anymore and it, it just works. Um, of course, Again, I'm not a building or construction engineer. I have no idea what I'm doing here on this screen, but you, you get the idea that, yeah, here you see the 3D object rendering in the browser without any additional drivers being installed. It just works nicely. And this is why we thought, wait a second, um, our customers are complaining about the, the nodes client being so hard to install, hard to deploy, can we please get the nodes client running in the browser? And yeah, like I explained before, uh, using these technologies, it should be easy to take the existing source code, cross compile it to WebAssembly to run, um, to open Domino mail and applications in the browser. In this case, we are calling the product HCL Nomad Web. Now to conclude uh, the technology side of things, um, you are of course asking yourself, how about browser compatibility? In your enterprise, you probably run a standard browser. May, some companies have standardized on Firefox, some on Chrome, some are using a Microsoft browser. So is WebAssembly supported on all browsers? And I just, double checked um, and provided you with this chart here. Let me just highlight this. So uh, each column represents a browser, browser vendor 
and each box represents the version of the browser. What I highlighted here is the current, uh, the latest version of the product. And if the box is green, it means uh, your browser, this browser can run WebAssembly. So you see uh, the major players in this market are just fine. The only problem is if you still run on Microsoft Internet Explorer version 11, which by the way is outdated and I think all customers already have plans to migrate to Edge or Chrome or whatever other vendor. Um, so the major browser vendors, major browsers that um, we see in the market space are Edge or Chromium Edge, Firefox, Chrome, um, and Safari. So these four are the major browsers and you see they all are supporting WebAssembly. <clears throat> um, now the same question exists for the other technology, meaning WebGL. And here you see that it's a bit easier because uh, Internet Explorer is also supporting it. But a long story short, um, in order to run Nomad Web, you need to have a browser that supports both technologies. Now let's dive into what does it mean for HCL Nomad Web. And I'm sure you're all looking forward to a small to see a small demo. So let's blend over to my demo machine over here. So I'm using this demo machine to all, do all my demos. So it has a bunch of software installed, but um, let me just show you, I'm not currently running any other software. So the memory footprint is quite low. There is no notes client started. You see that in the processes, let me just sort by description. So you see the notes client is not started. Okay, what I'm doing now, I'm taking my favorite browser, which is Firefox. I start it up and uh, just to make sure here, as you can see, there are no browser plugins installed. So no extra software installed at all. What I have to do as a user is to just open up the website, just to open up um, the Domino uh, welcome page, so to say, and it's prompting me to log in. Of course, I have to authenticate using my username and password. And in this case, Domino is configured for two-factor authentication. So I have to provide my uh, sorry, wrong, my two-factor authentication code. And <clears throat> once I am authenticated, no HCL Nomad Web is starting up. In this demo environment, um, you'll see uh, it is still prompt, again, prompting me for my notes password that is um, to be configured differently in your environment later on. And uh, once it is started up, you will see this very well-known desktop. And of course, we can go into a number of examples here just to show you that what you see just behaves like the Notes client. So you are able to open up mail and applications as you would normally do. So just for testing, let's create a mail in this group mailbox here. Um, so writing a mail to myself, you see type ahead is working fine. And then we have to give it a subject, test mail. And of course, let's say we're using some bullets, some color maybe. Yeah, so make them bulleted list and here make it color blue and Let's add another bullet maybe. And then, yeah. Then send this mail. Oh, let's set the delivery options. Uh, because of course we would like this mail to be encrypted. This is just to show you that encryption is of course working as before. So we are leveraging notes encryption in the same way as your notes client would do it, in the same way as Nomad on your smartphone would be able to encrypt um, data. And you can see the email, of course, uh, was sent. And yeah, of course, you can reply to it. I mean, 
from, for someone who has been working with the Nodes client before, this is nothing new. Uh, but on a technology side, this is really, really interesting because uh, that means that your existing Domino applications will just work unmodified, unchanged in the browser. And um, we are able to even slightly modernize the look and feel of your applications by presenting these uh, dialog boxes. Here you see these, the menu that you see. This is actually not the same menu that you can see in the notes client. It is uh, using latest uh, app dev development technologies, meaning we are using React, the React library to, um, to present dialog boxes, message boxes, and, and so on. Yeah, and of course, just saying, just doing some small tests here about highlighting and um, text highlighting, follow up flags, that's all just working nicely. And of course, um, calendar, the calendar is also working as it should. So that means if you have to access uh, applications, mail files quickly, you just need a browser in the future to access your applications on the go. Um, yeah. So, and of course, beside the calendar, Maybe let's create another one quickly. Yeah, of course, tomorrow I have to set a reminder to myself to uh, send the PDF file of this presentation to Arnak. Okay, just as a reminder so that you can all see the presentation handout. All right, so let's see um, what else can we do. Uh, let's take a look at some applications maybe. So for instance, um, yeah, this one here, the Domino Early Access Program, which we have talked about yesterday. Um, this is our forum, the discussion forum that we are using behind the scenes. It's one of the many Domino applications that you may have in your environment. And of course, it just works fine, meaning we could participate in the discussion. We could um, respond to forum posts. So that's um, just working fine. And yeah, of course, we're not going to save this because this is a live demo and I don't want to interfere with um, the discussion forum out there. All right, so let's cancel this or not save it and close it. Um, of course, Mm, something we've been working on in the last couple of months was, for instance, uh, scrolling capabilities and uh, what you've just seen, the ability to uh, apply fonts, color coding, uh, so to say, rich text formatting was something that we worked on. Just to give you another example, I mean, no demo would be complete without showing uh, Theo Heselman's wine tasting application. So this is one of the... Um, one of the Domino applications that uh, has a modernized user interface. Uh, and you probably have seen it in many other demos. So it's an application where you can um, make your choice of wine based on your, your def definition, your criteria. You can see uh, the label of the wine. Um, yeah, so I think from a business point of view, that's <clears throat> almost a very important uh, application out there. Yeah, so you see um, Domino applications uh, developed for, or applications developed for Domino uh, can have a very compelling user interface and they just run in the browser. And with that, you can leverage the um, low code application development capabilities of Domino to build applications once that will then run on your desktop, run on your smartphone, run in your browser natively, all with integrated security, with integrated encryption capabilities, and with the ability to work offline. This, in my opinion, is altogether a really groundbreaking technology, and that's why our customers are really looking forward uh, to see HCL Nomad in action. What I was showing here was our uh, demo environment. Um, so this is a product that is still being developed. 
and uh, we are expecting this to be released in the with Domino version 12, so um, in the first half of 2021. Now, talking about um, HCL Nomad, we have to talk about what does work perfectly fine and what does not work. And we have to be uh, open-minded here, switching back to my presentation, um, what you can do with Nomad Web and what not. Let me explain this chart. What you see here is um, a big box called uh, the desktop offline app profile. This is what the Notes standard client can do. The Notes standard client can run uh, anything in an NSF file, so documents, views, folders, it can run Lotus script, and the Notes client, the installed Notes client can run Java, and it can run X pages in your Notes client. I'm not talking about X pages on the Domino server, I'm talking about X pages on your Notes client. And um, we, we have started this journey um, in developing Nomad by going to the smartphone and um, and um, the on the smartphone, especially on the Apple iOS platform, um, there was a restriction that it was not allowed to provide any Java capabilities in an iOS application. And that's why Nomad uh, does not run Java, which is also true for Nomad Web. So if you run Nomad Web, the Domino application can do everything that you can do with the yellow outlined here in yellow, meaning you can work with notes documents, you can work with views, replication, encryption, working offline, working with full text indices, that all works fine. Lotus script and formula language works just fine. Uh, Lotus script, including the new Lotus script classes for the HTTP request uh, and the JSON parser class. Um, so that works just fine. What will not work is client side Java. So this is something I really wanted to point out because a lot of developers uh, have applications that use uh, different technologies and I, I needed to get this right. So uh, overall, coming back to the question, when, when to use what? Um, in the beginning, I was showing you or explaining to you that we already have HCL Nomad running on your mobile device. And here again, on the right-hand side, there are the QR codes. So if you want to install it on your smartphone or tablet, you can just scan that QR code. On the desktop, um, it's good news because by using Nomad Web, we no longer have a dependency to a specific operating system. Which means as long as you have a supported browser, Nomad Web is supposed to run just fine. Meaning if your corporate standard is uh, Windows, Mac OS, or if you run your workstation on Linux, it's just fine. All you have to have is a supported browser. Right now, as we speak, um, currently we have Chrome and Firefox uh, running well. We still are working on Safari and Edge, but this is to be done um, until we release the product next year. So uh, when, when we release the product, you will have support for all of these four major vendors. Um, let me underline that if you, in case you have any questions, there is a chat capability. So please ask your question. Um, we are going to refer back to the Q&A at the end of the show. All right, now you've seen me doing this demo in the browser and um, yeah, some people do not uh, really want to open up the browser all the time. They're expecting an installed desktop application and the technology to make this work is called um, Progressive Web App, PWA. And here I'm showing you a small demo showing uh, how to uh, how to take uh, the HCL Nomad into a PWA. So as an end user, I would just navigate to this website, to my Domino server, 
and I would click this little icon here in the, at the end of the address bar saying install, and it will create another icon on my desktop. And that's it. That was an installation. And I can do this even if I don't have management manager access on my uh, computer, meaning even if I don't have administrator access on my computer. So um, this leverages the PWA technology, meaning it then is a desktop application. It looks like a desktop application. It behaves like a desktop application, but it's, yeah, like I said, a PWA and, and a web browser encapsulated in an icon, so to say. Hmm. And this, going back to my slides, this resonates with our journey uh, to the digital office. Um, in our call this morning, where we are talking about HCLverse, we have been showing um, that we've been demonstrating Verse as a PWA. And what you've just seen on my previous slide was HCL Nomad Web running as a PWA. So you see it all comes together, these applications, these tools being delivered as a progressive web app, meaning you don't have to install um, a full uh, software package anymore. You don't have to worry about software distribution anymore because um, the, when a user opens up the or logs in to the web application, it will uh, just be prompted, hey, there is a new version and voila, uh, that's it. So no more time consuming software upgrades on the client side. And as Andrew Manby pointed out earlier this week, this all um, is supposed to merge into something that we call Project Yuzu uh, with an integrated user experience for all of our components in like 2022 or beyond. Now, if you would like to uh, take a look at Nomad Web yourself, you can do this because we have been launching uh, a public beta. So applause or uh, drum roll, the public beta has started. So if you would like to take a look, what you have to do is go to this QR code or go to this URL or scan this QR code, which redirects to the same page. And then scroll down in the list of beta programs and make sure you select web slash browser, meaning Nomad running in the browser. Um, in order to participate. You will then get, um, sometime later, you'll get an email from our support teams uh, guiding you on how to get started and uh, how to participate in the beta. So I'm, I'm really looking forward for you joining that program because we would like your feedback at a very early stage in the development phase. So please scan the QR code, join this um, beta program and um, there's one more thing that I have to say about it. If you are interested in um, validating or verifying if your application runs fine in Nomad Web, uh, please uh, contact us or contact me um, and provide us with your template, your application template, uh, so that we can uh, help you out and uh, provide you with a demo of running your application in Nomad Web. So really good news and I'm, I'm looking forward for your participation. <clears throat> so one step back in back into technology again, sorry for that. Um, the people who are working with Notes and Domino long enough um, have noticed what I've just what I was just showing was technically it was the notes client in a browser. And you might be asking, hey, wait a second. Uh, that means the notes client runs in the browser. Does it mean that the browser communicates on port 1352? And um, even though behind the scenes, it still is notes and domino um, data, the network communication has changed because the browser doesn't talk doesn't communicate on port 1352. What we had to do was to uh, find a protocol, a network protocol that allows bidirectional um, communication between client and server. 
And WebSockets is the protocol that we are using behind the scenes. So technically we are encapsulating an RPC into WebSockets. So wrapping an RPC into, wraps, uh, into WebSockets. That also means um, if you would like to participate or if you would like to roll this out in production, um, we need to talk about what is the requirements for a production deployment. So of course, as a starting point, you need to have a server, a, a Domino server, but also you will need, uh, let me switch to this slide first, uh, explaining the starting point. Um, so on the right hand side, you have your Domino server or servers, you can have many, and um, you have nodes clients or the client for application access on the left side, as well as the HCL Nomad client on iOS and Android. And they all communicate on port 1352 with your Domino server, which is good, which is fine. It works just great. Um, but now in like the situation we have out there with COVID-19 and people uh, that have to work outside of the corporate network, there is a firewall in between. And especially large customers um, have raised a request saying, hmm, we, we do not want to open the TCP port 1352. Um, so is there anything you can do about it? And yes, good news. Um, if you have been listening to our presentation yesterday about uh, HCL SafeLinks, that is the, um, the network proxy in between. So HCL SafeLinks is used to translate the network protocol between uh, HTTP, TLS, SSL on the left side and the nodes protocol on the right hand side. Meaning um, HCL SafeLinks is going to be part of your uh, Domino entitlement. So uh, you can install the SafeLink server as part of your license, but um, it has to be uh, a separate machine. It has to be sep installed separately because we have to do this network translation here. Again, for more details, please see the presentation yesterday about how to secu securely connect to your infrastructure. Um, quickly back to this one. So you'll need to have this Nomad web proxy server, which is HCL SafeLinks. And uh, you need to have uh, the ID vault deployed. I need to say this clearly because some customers still do not have an ID vault deployed, but for HCL Nomad, this is going to be mandatory. You have to have an ID vault. So if you don't have an ID vault yet, please plan to deploy the ID vault now. In terms of servers, um, the servers that you want to access they need to be on a Domino V12 license, but uh, from a functional point of view, it is technically possible to access um, version 11 and even lower versions of Domino. And I'm already mentioned browser support, it's Firefox and Chrome for today, but going to be extended to Edge and Safari as well. So I think, uh, in terms of this deployment, uh, once the SafeLink server is installed, you can then just uh, say, I'm going to leverage my existing browsers out there and they are connecting back to my Domino applications. So really it becomes easier than ever to uh, build and use Domino applications in your environment. I'm really looking forward uh, for this to become part of our product portfolio. So let me just um, provide you with a little bit of a roadmap on the way forward. Um, I mentioned before, we have started our public beta. So please join that beta program if you, if you can and provide us feedback. Our plan is to collect your feedback and improve the product uh, for the next yeah, three, four months of time and then uh, ship HCL Nomad Web with Domino version 12 in the first half of 2021. Once 
it is released, it's going to be a so-called continuous delivery product. It means that we are providing updates on a regular basis, at least quarterly in this case, uh, to keep you up to date and to modernize the stack. And again, this is good news for you because in order to upgrade all clients, you just need to upgrade one package, one uh, component on your server and automatically all clients will be upgraded as well. So this is really, really good news. Um, and with that, I think looking at the time, I have been talking quite a bit and I'm sure there are a number of questions out there. So let me see, do we have uh, Vlad on the call? Hey, there you are. <laughs> Can we go to your questions and answers about Nomad Web, please? Hi, everyone. So yeah, we have some questions from audience. So one, questions, uh, one question is, uh, uh, does it, uh, is a license of uh, Nomad Web included in CCB or other licenses? Is it a paid component or this is something that is included as part of uh, in license, enterprise, express, whatever? We, we have not released the Domino V12 license terms, but our intention is to include HCL Nomad in the product license of uh, the CCB license. Okay, I see. Do we need to install something on computer? I think you uh, answer it, it, but I think some people may be joined later. Do we need mm -hmm. to install something on a computer itself, endpoint? No, on the client, on the on the end user side, you don't need to install anything. In my demo, I was trying to make it very clear that you just take a computer with a supported browser and then you just go to the website and voila, it's running. When you access the website for the very first time, when you open up Nomad Web for the very, very, very first time, you will see a little bit of a delay. And I'm talking about 10, 20 seconds maybe uh, to load uh, the web assembly module. Uh, but then uh, you can just use it. Like I said, if you go back in the recording of today's session, you will see in the demo that um, I have no browser plugin installed and I have no notes client running or installed on this machine. So it's completely independent and it only needs the browser. Yeah, we, uh, we, we thank you very much, uh, Thomas. And uh, one more thing, and uh, let me see. For mobile clients, do you think, uh, so what should be done on uh, mobile devices like iPads and iPhones, mm -hmm. Androids? Yeah, I had one slide in my deck um, giving a guidance on what to do. Um, the guidance is if there is a native client for your mobile platform, then please use that native client uh, because uh, these clients are optimized for the operating system that they are running on. And there are some integrations, for instance, uh, camera integration or biometric authentication that we have uh, included in HCL Nomad recently. Um, those capabilities require device specific uh, communication. And that's why you should leverage um, the free of charge HCL Nomad app from the app store um, on, your, on your smartphone and tablets. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, we have one more. It's related to Mac OS and the new chip M1. I think it's, uh, will it be supported? As far as I know, there is a Rosetta project uh, by Apple, but maybe you can comment a little bit more. Yeah. Um, hmm. Good question. Well, first of all, uh, HCL Nomad as of today is not officially supported on the M1 CPU. Uh, we are currently running compatibility tests to see um, if there needs to be any changes. I have seen a blog post out there um, from Roberto, I think. I hope I'm not mixing up names now, uh, showing that HCL Nomad does run on the M1 notebooks, but um, we haven't officially certified for this platform yet. So please, um, yeah, 
if you if you manage to install it or manage to run it, then uh, use it with care. We are going to provide an official support statement in the next uh, couple of days to provide you with more information on what to expect uh, for supporting the new M1 chips. Um, because of course we understand it's a it's a very fast notebook, uh, but under the covers it's a completely different CPU. So we need to change some compile settings and perfectly testing all components of uh, the client before we can um, put it out there to the App Store. Uh, thank you. And we can remind that uh, even in relation to HCL products or any other software you have, Apple had uh, two versions of Rosetta project when uh, Apple was migrating from uh, PowerPC to Intel and now to M1. Uh, Apple can simulate, you know, kind of translate like we do now, uh, instructions from one uh, architecture to another. And yeah, uh, but of course, it's it's uh, probably much faster if you run on the native CPU architecture, and uh, we'd like to provide the best of breed experience. So there is work on the way, uh, but please stay tuned for more news. Uh, thank you. And we have more questions, uh, which is good. Uh, you mentioned that there is uh, something local in Nomad uh, as well. Something uh, there is a slight delay on the first start. So uh, can we uh, treat it like a local nodes directory, local cache of browser, hmm. some uh, yeah repository? Can you it, tell? It, it, it technically is a local browser cache. So when you open Nomad Web for the very first time, it is uh, like accessing a, a web page, it will the browser will cache the design elements, and that's what we do when you load a Nomad Web. The Web Assembly module is being cached locally, so the next time you're accessing it, it's much faster. I see. Thank you. Uh, there is a question about uh, whether applications should be adjusted to work in Assembly. I think you had a really good slide about that. That uh, Java things and uh, what you, you even said you you want to make it clear what mm -hmm. will work and will what will not work. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, maybe we can just come back to the slide and uh, comment again. So if we can get screen sharing again, then I think you yes. have Q&A slide right now. It's presented. Yes, there thank you. Go. you. <clears throat> yeah. I, I think I, I made this clear that everything in yellow will just work fine. <clears throat> if you have source code written in Java that runs in your client, then this needs to be revisited because Nomad <clears throat> doesn't run Java. <clears throat> But I don't think this is I don't think that this is a problem because first of all, X pages in the Nodes client, um, well, X pages is typically typically a technology you run on the Domino server and not in the client. And when it comes to Java, you can uh, change the application so that your Java code runs on the server and the client just calls a server side agent and executes that agent. <clears throat> So these are like technologies to mitigate. I think we have a tech note explaining this in more details because this is um, the same for our mobile devices. So for HCL Nomad on, on smartphones and tablets, uh, you have to know about the same. And there is a tech note out there describing exactly what does work and where you want to have another look at your application. Thank you. And we have two questions related to security. So we, I know you love security. Thomas. Of course. <laughs> As all of us. Uh, uh, we mentioned that the uh, uh, nodes data director is in a browser local cache, some repository. So yeah. how well it is protected? So it, is it encrypted? Uh, is it safe to use? is only uh, only this application can access. I think it's a kind of browser architecture, but please comment. On this. It is of course encrypted. Um, we are using the well-known nodes um, encryption technologies locally. We are using a nodes ID file. And so it's the same, it's similar to encrypting your local replica. 
So I think that explains why you need ID vault, right? So you need indeed, indeed. We really wanted to make it um, more secure on one hand and easier to use on the other hand. So the ID vault, um, which exists, I think, since version 8.5 of Nodes and Domino, makes it easy to um, have one identity and you know one set of um, security across different computers. And um, with the integrated single sign-on capabilities, it's uh, seamless to, an end, to the end user, but it provides us with the uh, security with the private public private key infrastructure that we need for strong encryption. Uh, we have, thank you very much. I'm just reading and uh, trying to yeah, analyze the question. So uh, will we have some access to local, uh, I believe nodes uh, directory? So we'll, we'll be able to work with applications uh, that resist on a local disk. So in this case, in browser cache, potentially some customers may have an application like a local replica. Can we have something like this, like uh, in a nomad? Yes, you can have a local replica of your application. Yes. Um... I think I was not showing this in my demo, but uh, yeah, of course you can create a local replica of your uh, server-based application, put it in your, put it as a local replica, which is encrypted as we just said, and then disconnect the network cable and continue to work locally. I think it's a, a unique technology, right? We can use it in on submarines underwater, in planes, and I think no technology can do what Domino can do. I'm looking forward for your demo when you do uh, when you open up the first Domino application while you are diving. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan. <laughs> yeah, it's a crazy thing. Uh, Thomas, you are awesome as always. Thank you for presenting your uh, session today. We will look forward to your Docker session yes. with Daniel. I think. Uh, just a small teaser that uh, the Docker comes in our life uh, more and more. And uh, Thomas and Daniel will show today how to uh, do uh, domino installation. I, and I think these skills are really important and you just introduce it one touch installation. So we will see what it mean in, in few hours from now. Thank uh, you. Uh a lot of more exciting news to come. So till then, enjoy your coffee with love from Moscow. <laughs> from Russia, yeah. <laughs> like in James Bond movie. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. All See right. you soon. Thank, thank you, you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.